Personal story segment tonight, legendary anchorman Ted Koppel has interviewed thousands of people, and even though he's out of the day-to-day -day TV grind, he is closely following what's happening in America. Mr. Koppel, also the author of the book, Lights Out, Cyber Attack, Nation Unprepared, Surviving the Aftermath, New York Times bestseller. He joins us now from Washington. So let's assess uh, Donald Trump. Um, I've interviewed him a number of times. Not an easy interview. Uh, how would you do it? You know, some, Bill, you and I have talked about this general subject many times over the years. It's irrelevant how I would do it. And uh, you know who made it irrelevant? You did. Uh, you have changed the television landscape over the past 20 years. You took it from being objective and dull to being subjective and entertaining. And in this current climate, it doesn't matter what the interviewer asks him. Mr. Trump is going to say whatever he wants to say, it, as outrageous as it may be. And the fact of the matter is, his audience, as much as anything, is not even a television audience. It's an audience on Twitter. They deal in messages of 140 characters or less, which keeps it nice and simple. Okay, but you know, your old network ABC does interview Mr. Trump on a regular basis. Yeah. And you know, it comes in and you've got to come in with a strategy with him. Um, you've got to come in with sharp questions and you, you're right, maybe his supporters don't care what he says. However, our job, whether I'm a commentator or a reporter, is to get as much information, number one, and two, show the viewer who the person really is. So again, I'll go back to, he's sitting on Nightline, you're opposed, right opposite him. How do you do it? Well, the first way you do it is not in the interview. You do it by some reporting. It's, it's an old-fashioned concept, but I think demonstrating who and what Mr. Trump is and what his various policies really amount to uh, is something you don't do in an interview. He doesn't answer the questions. I've seen any number of your colleagues and mine ask him very pointed questions and do it in a, in a, perfectly, uh, a perfectly professional and reasonable fashion. He just ignores the questions. When is the last time you have heard Donald Trump spell out a real policy on anything other than we're going to be the greatest, you know, the best, we're going to be the greatest, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to negotiate the best deals you've ever seen. There is no substance in any of that, and nobody among his followers seems to care about that. It's true that he is getting a pass because he's not a traditional politician and he's appealing to emotion, which is a brilliant strategy in this age of dissent in America. Uh, Bernie Sanders doing the same thing. I mean, let's be honest, Bernie Sanders' programs are just as wild as some of Mr. Trump's programs. But you yeah, still but have he's, to sit But down. He's, coming in, he's coming in a poor second and Trump is way ahead of the pack. So right. it does make a difference. Right. Right. Nobody, nobody is, is able to hold Donald Trump to account because he's not playing by the traditional rules. So Isn't that a smart thing for him to do, though, if he wants oh, to be president? Uh, it's, it's obviously been an incredibly smart thing. I mean, I don't want to pretend that I've been predicting all along that he's going to win. Quite the contrary. I couldn't imagine that he would win. At this point, I find it hard to believe that he won't. I still think that the Republicans are going to do everything they can uh, to take it away from him at the convention, if need be. And, but as I said, if they do that, they lose the election because millions of Trump voters will say, you know what, the fix is in. And Trump himself would run on a third party if that happened, and that would destroy the GOP. He might, but what they, you know, Bill, I think what they're more worried about right now is Senate losing and the House. Senate yeah. and losing the House. Right. right. But, but with all of that defection, all of the Republicans who support Donald Trump um, not voting for any Republicans, so that, you know, you've got to be very, very careful. Now, would you, as a, uh anchor man? Would you, you obviously don't approve of Donald Trump. And uh, I tell everybody, look, because uh, he gets angry uh, at me sometimes because I'll have commentators on a program that don't like Trump. And I point out, listen, it's their opinion. All right. And, I, and, and they're entitled to their opinion. And I'm being fair. And I ask their opinion. and I challenge. But I have just as many on who like Trump as Andrea Tanteros than don't. But and you're in the chair now, now, not when you were back in Nightline, but now, today, with all the things that you pointed out, it's a whole different ball game on cable TV. Commentators like me have just ruined the country. I, I cop to that. It's true. Yeah. Right. right. I've ruined everything. Although the journalists 
outnumber the commentators by about 50 to 1, and maybe the journalists aren't as powerful as they should be. But anyway, would you show your disdain at a certain point for a certain candidate? It doesn't have to be Donald Trump. Could be Bernie Sanders. Could be anybody. Would, under these new rules in television, is that allowed? No, I, I don't like the new rules of television, and, and quite frankly, I don't think I would adhere to the new rules of television. It's not a question of what I personally think. It's a question of whether there is any substance there. You asked me what questions I would ask. I think the first thing that has to be demonstrated is a little bit of journalism. Go into some of the details of who and what Mr. Trump actually is, what those policies amount to, and then after you've laid it out, I mean, you remember on Nightline, and that's what we used that's to what do. That's what you did. You opened up five a piece. Or, sure. Exactly. A five or six minute piece that lays out the issues. Then you talk to the candidate and you say, why is it that we don't have anything more than just fluff? OK. But the problem is that now the network news on the three CBS, NBC and ABC perceived to be liberal. So the people that you might want to persuade are saying, you know what, they don't like them and they're going to twist their reporting. And it's the same thing with The New York Times and The Washington Post, that a lot of the straight reportage that used to be accepted is now questioned because of this perceived liberal bias, correct? And, and the fact of the matter is, Bill, you deserve both credit and you have to accept responsibility. For the past 20 years, as I said at the outset, you have been changing the landscape. The fact of the matter is, it's hard to believe these days, but 30 years ago, a television network anchor, Walter Cronkite, was the most trusted man in America. There's not a man today, yourself included, on television as an anchor who is trusted by anything approaching a majority no, but I got, of the American people. I, well, I did get um, in the Gallup poll uh, most admired in the top 10, so that wasn't. But well, anyway, look, I'm an honest guy. You're tall, that's because you're tall and handsome. Well, bro. thank you. But you know I'm an honest guy or you wouldn't be sitting there. And um, whether I've done anything, I always try to be fair and I try to bring the folks a straight story. Ted, thanks very much as always. We appreciate it. Very provocative.